This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, let's uh, go through question uh, three of section B of the F9 specimen exam. <clears throat> and look at the requirements again. Part A, purely written four marks, explain briefly the relationship between exchange rates and interest rates and two, exchange rates and inflation rates. Now, he only wanted briefly, so he didn't want a full um, explanation of purchasing power parity and interest rate parity. Um, there's no way he'd expect all of that for just two marks for each of them. But all he wanted is you knew the difference, because you do have those two formulae uh, at the bottom of the formula sheet which not here, but in other questions you could be asked to actually apply. And all he really wanted was this. And as always, read his answer, you know, and try and write a sentence. But exchange rates and interest rates, well, that's the interest rate parity formula. The uh, right hand, the, the uh, second one on the formula sheet, which is F0 equals S0, well, interest rates are used to uh, determine forward rates. Uh, you've got to have watched, or you must watch, the lectures on finance exchange risk management, but forward rates are one way of um, um, uh, removing the risk due to exchange rates. Forward rates are calculated using interest rates, uh, and that's fine uh, for the short term. In the short term, it's very much dictated, well, forward rates are dictated by the interest rates in the two countries. Uh, whereas number two, uh, exchange rates and inflation rates, is the first of the two formulae, purchasing power parity, S1 is S0 and so on, this is used for forecasting spot, future spot rates the actual interest rate will change for all sorts of reasons one reason there will be inflation and that's something you know perhaps we can measure uh, and if you were asked to forecast a future um, spot rate then we use um, inflation rates. And that's more for the long term. In theory, interest rates, um, inflation rates move together. In practice, no. But anyway, there we are. Short term forward rates, we use in interest. Long term forecasting of spot rates, we use inflation. All right, four marks, but part B. Here's the arithmetic bit. Calculate whether a forward market hedge or a money market hedge should be used to hedge the payment of 5 million pesos in six months' time. And if we look back at the information, ZPS, whose home currency is the dollar, took out a fixed interest peso bank loan several years ago when interest rates were relatively cheap compared to dollar rates. Economic difficulties have now increased peso interest rates while dollar interest rates remain relatively so That's fascinating. But the relevant bit, ZPS must pay interest of 5 million pesos in six months' time And, of course, although we give them the spot rate, the reason we're at risk is in a six months' time, the spot rate could have changed to anything. And you've got to be confident of the two ways for F9 that you can be asked to show the arithmetic. First of all, let's do the easy one, forward rates. With forward rates, we fix today the rate that will be used in six months time. Uh, well we told the six month forward rates 12.805 to 12.889 pesos per dollar 
And so if we go for forward rates, we're forced to convert the 5 million pesos at that forward rate. Well, two things. First of all, because it's 12, 13 pesos per dollar, to convert pesos to dollars, we'll divide by either 12, 805 or 12, 889. The second thing is, of course, which of the two rates to use, the two rates, depending which way around you're converting. Well, I don't care how you remember this, I give the rule in the lectures, or the rule I use, depends whether ZPS is buying pesos or selling pesos. Here, uh, ZPS is having to pay interest, and so they're having to buy pesos, and therefore we'll use the first, the lower of the two rates, 805. And the amount they'll have to pay in dollars will therefore be 390472, 390,472 to the nearest dollar. I said, I don't care how you remember which rate. If you want, it takes a second longer to think. But remember, it's always whichever's worse for us. It's the bank who makes the profit. Since we're paying money, dividing by the smaller of the two exchange rates, they'll end up with us having the biggest payment. So that's forward rates, and you should find them very, very quick. What inevitably always takes longer is money market hedging. And with money markets, Again, you've got to learn it, I'm afraid. The three steps. First of all, we are going to have to pay money. And so rather than wait six months and then um, convert and be at risk, we're going to convert money now. But we'll put the money, the pesos on deposit, let them earn some interest, and then the deposit can pay, uh, with interest can pay uh, the, the pesos. So the first step is we'll put pesos on deposit now. Uh, but instead of putting five million on deposit, we'll put a bit less on deposit because it will be earning interest over the six months. So how much interest will we be earning? Um, peso, the deposit rate is 7.5% a year, but we'll be putting on deposit for half a year. We'll get 3.75%. So how much do we need to deposit to have 5 million available in 6 months? 5 million divided by 1 plus the interest rate. Sorry, 5 million divided by 1.03.75 is 4819277 now. If we deposit that many pesos now, in six months' time, add on the interest, we'll have the 5 million we need. How can we put that many on deposit now? Well, we'll have to convert now at spot. So we need to buy 4819277 pesos. If we buy those pesos now at today's spot, well, the same logic as before, it'll be the lower rate. As of today, we convert to 12.5. Well, I've left that figure in my calculator. Divide by 12.5. We'll need 385542 now. Finally, where are we going to get that $3.8 million now? Well, always, but it specifically tells us here, we'll borrow the dollars now for six months.
How much interest will we have to pay? Well, the interest on dollar borrowing is 4.5% a year, but we're only borrowing for six months, which is 2.25%. And therefore, how much will we owe in six months? We've borrowed 3.85542. Add on 2% interest, 1.0225. And the amount we'll owe in six months. Is three nine four two one seven. And so the net cash flow today is zero. We borrow money, we convert it, we deposit it, but in six months time we'll have to pay out that much to repay our borrowing. The deposit will mature and five million pesos will appear to go to the uh, supplier. Uh, finally, make sure you have answered the question. We've got virtually all the marks, but it does say calculate whether forward market or money market should be used. Well, in either case, it'll be a fixed payment. If it was forward, using forward rates, we'd be paying out 390472. With money markets, we'd be paying out 394217. So as I said, we've done the calculations, we've got virtually all the marks, but whether we should use forward or money. Well, remember we're paying, so if we say that's the cheaper of the two, um, the better of the two here will be to use the forward market. So a very, very, very standard question. It certainly doesn't come up every time, no way, but in terms of the arithmetic, when he does ask a full foreign exchange one, the arithmetic can only be forward rates, money markets. And you'd expect to have both, uh, as we've got here. So there we are, there's question three.